All opinions expressed by the program participants are solely their own opinions and do not reflect the opinions of Upscale Love for You. The program participants... Opinions are based on the information that they consider from their own knowledge. No expressions or accuracy is related to upscale love for you. And, 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 it's the current, it's the currency. The currency is not sex, believe it or oh, not. No. Oh, the no, currency is that. attention. Ah. If you stop paying attention to me, I want to know why. Mm. What something changed. else better came along. Exactly. Mm. Exactly. It, it may not, it may not even be that. It may not even but be they that. Think but they, think that. Yeah. they will think then, that it might be then, something, something right. else. And then they say, I got to compete. And then they'll right. Right. Men, on the on the man side, the man will compete, even though he don't want you. He's going to compete to get you back into the to bring you back into the fold. So even now, if women, you don't want you, okay, I got that. And, and women do that to a certain yeah. extent because if they got a guy, they know meets almost every criteria. Every criteria. Yeah. Okay. Yes, it's game. Play, yes, it is game playing, but that's mm -hmm. that's human human nature. Even though he meets all that criteria, if he was to go and find another woman and move on from you, you're gonna be hurt. And, and you're not hurt because he got he's happy. You're gonna be hurt because A, she took my she took my plan B from me. Right. So a lot of times we don't we we look at that. A lot of times we we have to look at that and say, hey, why are these people in our lives? Right. Why are these people in our lives? You got to keep right. evaluating because not everybody needs to be in your circle, and yeah. not every not everybody and not everybody has to be in your circle. Some people you got to deal with professional, and you leave it professional. Some people you be personal, and you leave it at personal. But you got to evaluate every day. You have to evaluate why somebody in your life, or why are you in their lives, because you could be their emotional tampon, guy or gal. You could be the emotional pacifier. That sounded so nasty. It, it did. It's, it's, it's true, though. I know, it's true. I know, but it's true. I mean, you know, the, the truth sometimes ain't welcome, Dr. Feel good. The truth sometimes but that's, ain't. But that, but that is very true. I, I mean, it was good, but just, okay. But, but, that's, but that's what happens when we look at things in those perspectives is that, you know, we both men and women have friend zones. Yeah. We have them for different reasons. Women have a friend zone to get all the non-sexual attention. Mm -hmm. And men have it to get the sexual gratification without doing boyfriend duties. Oh, okay. Those are those, it's the same, it's the same exact thing, but you know, if you put them both together, you have a you have a good relationship. <laughs> but, True. If you could blend the two. Mm. Yeah. Yes, but that's not going to that's not going to happen because guys, I was getting ready to say, like you say, I have this one male guy. I love to go on trips with him. It's like we don't see each other the entire time. But if he pick up that phone and say, Dr. Fabulous, I want to take you to do this. Wherever he want to take me, I'm going to get my bags together and I'm going on that trip because we have such a great connection when we're traveling but on land everyday life can't do it oh there. wow 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 that's interesting okay um i have something I, i'm going to try to share my screen so y'all be patient with me hold on i gotta see if i can get it to work just give me a can second you, yes can you do that for me smart new equipment has I'm going to make. I'm going to make you the host. I'm make. I'm gonna make you the host. Okay. Um, Doctor. Right. Doctor. Heather's hand. She had it up for a while. Uh -huh. Heather. Oh, Heather, can you go? Heather, go ahead and talk, baby. Oh, now I can see stuff. Okay. Sure. It's funny how Doctor Feelgood just.
touched on something that I have been experiencing for a while with someone. Um, you know, it, it's really challenging just dating just nowadays outside of meeting people on social media and apps, but it's just the transparency about where folks are. You know, you can get to learn somebody, you can, they can tell you specific things, you're really feeling, want to be supportive, you want to be there for them. And they do so many things that is contrary to what they're saying. It's so visual because, you know, everybody is posting and putting all of this stuff out there. And as a person who is very sensitive, um, but still in playing, it's really hard trying to like combat the game. You know what I mean? As far as like, if you know I'm a good person from the time that you've gotten to know me, whether it's a month or two or two years, um, don't play the game with me. You, there's a whole bunch of women that like playing the games. Mm -hmm. Go play it with them. Go play with them. Leave the ones that really are out here that are clear about what they want, whether they want to build a partnership, whether they want to build some foundation with somebody. Because mm -hmm. as we get older, the time that we waste trying to be a support, trying to show someone who we are, and the efforts keep going and going and you don't get it back, and you're watching this person move about the world, and leave you for last, I have been experiencing this. And it's been really challenging. And I was like, please don't let anybody in this conversation, the moderators speak on something that is just gonna touch me and get me emotional, but it has. And it, make, it, it really is like, it really makes me sad because as much as nobody wants to live in this world and not have partnership, but when you are playing games and you're doing things that's so obvious and you can't even speak up and just say, listen, you know, I really am feeling you but I'm not ready for you right now, or, right. you know, I, I can't do that. But you know what, Heather, a lot of guys would say, if I was into marriage, you would be the perfect wife. You hold all the qualities, this and that, yeah, but I'm just not ready. I think mm -hmm. that's the best thing said, because you know your worth, you know you're en enough, they're just I not do. ready. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I do. And the frustrating part is that you don't know what to do with those feelings and emotions that you develop for this person, but you know that you haven't been given the efforts that you've given out. And mm -hmm. the type of person that I am that you guys have learned just through some of you know my sharings, I'm, I'm very sensitive and I'm very outgoing. Um, I'm a Virgo, so I'm, I'm not as spontaneous, but I'll do, you know, spontaneous things, but I, mm -hmm. I'm afraid to take risks. Major I'm birthday. afraid to fall into situations September 22nd. <laughs> okay, okay. So, okay, Virgo. And, and the, the, Team Virgo. <laughs> I'm going to cuss, cuss with Virgo and Libra, but the thing about it is that, you know, you you have to play these games where you have to act extra strong, strong and as if you're not um, exactly. impacted by what the person is doing. You have to be like, all right, I see you doing that. And then sometimes that clouds you um, being able to share your emotions and share your feelings. And then you have people, when you do share your feelings, they downplay your feelings or they gaslight you for sharing how you felt in a moment. And you can't do that to people. That's how you scar a lot of women and some men where now they're turned off by wanting to date and wanting to be, and it takes them a long time to get back out there with yep. whatever dramas that they had in their past. And I've made it a, a thing to not talk about like past relationships over and over and over again, because that hurt is healed. I'm not, I'm, trying, I'm not trying to go back there. You right. know, if you want to learn about what I dealt with in the past, I'm going to give you a little tidbit, but I don't live there no more. Okay. I'm moving forward because I want right to be able to share now. the direct life with somebody so I can enjoy that, enjoy what's to come this and a lot of these men tonight. i'm just i'm confused and it's it's hard to figure out what's going it's on with, here, with our men and i know that they go through a lot of stuff i've been with men that have have not been employed for a long period of time or they're having all other types of troubles and i'm like listen that's what we're here for but we're not going to take okay. the brunt of everything that you're going through and you can't forget about us we also in this world too, and we're dealing with some things, maybe not the same thing the black man is dealing with, but we're dealing with stuff too. And how we cope with stuff is a little bit different, but we need some supports. We need a listening ear, a shoulder, an arm, 
a pat on the head, you know, things like that. And, you know, that's what makes us move about in this world together, you know, as, as couples, as, and I, they don't want that anymore. They want to move through women. They want to be out there. They want to be seen. And then it's just like, you're asking, you want love. How, right. Sway? How? 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 Okay. So um, all that, I'm just Heather, glad girl, you, you, you are on it. <laughs> like, whew, I think you just, whew, we just going to touch and agree tonight, okay? Um, real quick, I wanted to show this. I hope I can do it. Uh, it was a text after a first date. Let's see, share screen. There, there. So um, it said, uh, so the, the, we're going to start right here. The lady says, so how was your day? He says, I can't complain. Work was pretty stressful, though. Glad to be off. I'm going to shower. I'll text you when I'm out. So then he says, honestly, Diamond, you seem like an amazing woman, but I don't think we're compatible. You ate the whole damn salad, which isn't ladylike. Makes me feel like you're greedy for food, and I need a woman who knows when to stop eating. You know, I meal prep and go to the gym daily. I just feel like you'd be overweight in the near future. I still want to hang out, but that bothered me. I almost exploded. I love your vibe and energy though. You're perfect. It's just that one thing, plus it was our first date. You were supposed to have butterflies and shit. How could you eat that much? So what are we thinking? What are we thinking about this? She didn't respond back. There was no response. Um, I, I what would be your response is, is my question. What would be your response to that? Did I stop sharing the screen? I wouldn't have not a I wouldn't have a response. <laughs> I, I have a comment. Look, even the nurse in here says she wouldn't have no response either. <laughs> well, you know what? It depends on the individual because a person like me, I will respond. And you know, she was probably hungry that night, you know. It was just a salad though. Yeah, but I'm just saying. But my thing is this: why is it? Why tell me? I'm coming to you. Why is it not ladylike to finish your food? Yeah, and that's what I was going to say. You could have been the Olive Garden, order another salad. My God, you know, (laughs) is it that deep? That's what I'm saying. Why do why do because there's a lot of stereotypes that women are not supposed to eat all their food. They're supposed to be ladylike. That. Shucks, I'm hungry. Well, well yeah, see, let, let, me, let me jump in. They're dropping. <laughs> from from a, the move here, off. Lock and forget. Okay. Uh, uh, from a male point, I remember my mom telling my sisters, like, when you go out, don't clear your plate. Leave us some food on there. Not if I'm hungry. Uh, um, <laughs> I was raised to eat all your food because we can't afford to waste nothing. Well, see, uh, you wasn't buying this food, so... Um, I mean, but we that's don't know one yet. thing. We don't know yet. We go. We might be going out with answer. We got to keep our hand on our pockets. That's right. Uh, uh, you <laughs> might be going <laughs> dust. <laughs> I in another group, and it's like, well, he wasn't wrong because if that's his expectation, uh, if his expectation of a lady is that she doesn't clean her plate, and she cleaned her plate, it doesn't meet his expectation. And so it came out after the first date. So touchdown for that brother for stating what he yes, wanted ma'am. his expectations to be. Oh, okay. Could he have done it better? Yeah, and all that stuff. But my point is, she didn't meet his but, expectations. Well, he could be passing up somebody extremely no. wonderful. He said he liked her vibe and everything, but she just ate all her food. That was exactly, that and was she so could have had a stressful on. day. She was stressful eating. So please whatever. Please, hey, she please, 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 please. Kim has her hand up. Answer, can Kim, Kim go before you? And Kim please. and then Anson, if you don't mind, Anson, because well, I haven't heard from Kim tonight. Kim, go ahead, babe. Okay, okay, guys. I just have to share this. Like, first of all, this is ridiculous to to over over a salad. And then second of all, I have to tell my experience. So I went on a date with a guy one time and he said that um he had an issue with me because I sat on the wrong side of the booth um during our date. And yeah. So apparently women are supposed to 
shit. Well, I, I mean, I kind of, I knew this, but I didn't think it was a big deal. I wasn't thinking it was a first date, you know? And I sat down, and he said that I sat on the wrong side of the booth. So, uh, he was just telling me all the things that women should do. Um, and that was his main issue um, about our date. And after oh. that, I never talked to him. Kim, Kim, did you um, did you sit so that he had his back towards the door? Is that what well, he meant? When I yes, because when I got when I got I got to the restaurant first, so uh -huh. I was waiting for him to come in. You know what I'm saying? Like I sat down so that I could see the door because he was late. Oh, okay. He was late for the day, and so. So when he sat down, his back was to the door. But uh, my thing was, you were late. Like, I had to see when you came in. You wouldn't have known where I was, you know, if you if you, you were late. Like, it, at that point, you know, the, okay. the rules go out the, out the window. I just thought that was just the pettiest thing ever. Like that, you know. And that, that was the, the problem because he was late. Had he been right. on time, he could have said where he wanted to sit. Well, exactly. now, if, and that was thing, if, if, if you know that men sit facing the door, when you saw him, you should have stood up and he probably could have pointed to where you should sit and everything. There you go. And your masculine energy trying to be the dude. No, I don't think that was the case <laughs> in this point. Like sometimes we be trying to be the guy. I get it. Hey, um, I get it. I'm just, I'm just talking shit on that point. but um, uh, Of course. Um, <laughs> Where would we be without my, my, that? My, 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 my main thing is <laughs> when you go on a date, if you see somebody you're interested in and you have these expectations on how you were brought up and what you view and things of that nature, you you know, he could have had a conversation and like, well, I like to sit facing the door and, and stuff and all this stuff. See, this is one thing we do. We drop each other rather quickly. One of my drops and points is you can be fine and everything I ever wanted, but say we go out to eat or something or, or go somewhere and you pull out a cigarette, that's it. I can't take a woman that smokes cigarettes. Can she smoke weed? Um, I, ask, um, a ask a for friend. Ask a for friend. But if she has a, it depends on how much weed she smokes, but I don't um, do that, so for I don't want my party doing it. Now, cigars, that's a little more acceptable. Um, but we have our expectations of what, what of we what, damn, of what we want the other person to look like, behave, and all those. And if it doesn't mess at the first date, there's no use of going on. But you can have discussions if you, you feel a vibe. And that's where I the teaching teach a moment. You know, I'm the kind of hint at what I like. Well, I'm not gonna hit. I'm gonna tell you what I expect of you. But hey, but don't that, you I, think that sometimes? I think you touched on it though, Douglas. You said that you know we can throw each other away, but sometimes we need to save some of our pettiness for later on to kind of have some conversation about. Because because sometimes things can just be ridiculous, like with the salad. That's that's just stupid. Like, I, I mean, I get what you're saying. Like, you want what you want in a mate, but that girl could have been hungry that night. You know, like I said, with my example, he got there late. Um, you know, and if the seat was that important, you should have said something. If the salad was an issue, you know, hey, you like, do you don't know what happened. That girl might not have eaten all day. That's just ridiculous. It wasn't, that's something you talk about. If you really want to get to know the person, then you let that go for that moment and see how the next day goes. Well, well, see, now, if the next day is an issue, then, you know, maybe that's not the person for you. Maybe, you know, you're really not that into that person anyway, because I strongly believe that, you know, when you're into somebody, you can you can look past some of the faults. We all have to at some point if you're going to get involved with someone. That's true. So, so that's just, I mean, you know, but the, the pettiness up front, you, you, you can't be petty day, day one because... Like I said, you're dealing with nerves. You don't know what happened during that day. You don't know what happened before before they got to the restaurant. You don't know what what that person is going through. And and they're not going to tell you that when they initially meet you. 
my, my point of view, you can say and do whatever, because that's you. It's how we deal with each other. Now, if I'm taking uh, a woman out to dinner, I'm going to get me a snack first, because y'all take down forever to look at the menu, and then you ask asking, what, what, what am I getting? God damn it, I wonder what you're going to so I can eat. But, um, yeah, yeah, but uh, we should have, I don't know, it's just crazy. Hey, do any of y'all smoke? <laughs> Not now. <laughs> <laughs> so you gonna deny yourself from me? Of course, Douglas. Okay. <laughs> I'm gonna give you four minutes. <laughs> Bow humps. Okay, Anton. Yeah, I want to address two things. One, I want to get rid of this perspective of me being cheap. Okay, I just have a problem with women trying to dictate what men do with their money. So I've said this plenty of shows before, and I'm gonna keep saying it. I'm just not going to stand for this perspective of me not paying for dates or anything like that because I never want to say that. But anyway, <laughs> oh, who has I know, I know. I know. We're just teasing you, baby. We, we, I know if you taking me out, you paying because we going to the food truck. And, you <laughs> <laughs> and I'm going to eat all of my food. <laughs> I'm, I'm making, I never eat all of my food. Just, I don't know why. I just want to dispel that rumor uh, okay. or that perspective. And um, uh, to the main point is that yeah, he could have addressed that a whole better way than long text messages like that. But one thing now I keep saying from show after show is that men deal with same things that women deal with. It's just we, 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 we men usually take things differently. Just like women take things differently. Heather's Hezle, been on fire tonight. She said she made a point earlier, saying that women are sensitive, and and that that they should be suffering, which is true. So, yeah, he could have chose a better way to tell her what he felt, mm -hmm. but he chose to to do it that way. And the fact is that you have to accept what people do. People are not always going to do what you want them to do. And I, and I think a lot of times on, on this show, we have a problem with a lot of times women express themselves have a problem with what men do. The fact is that people are going to do whatever they're going to do. You just have to accept it. And yeah. You have to work with it. And you have to do what you have to do and navigate throughout your life. Just like I said shows ago, we men <clears throat> know what it's like to get rejected. You know? But we, we might not agree with the rejection. We might not agree with us not being able to get what we want, but we have to accept it. Why? Because there's so many excuses to why it happened. So just, just for example, if that text message was the other way around, if she sent that text and he didn't, the conversation would be completely different right now. Because I, I, can, I can already see it. Every woman on this panel will be saying that she just said what she did, what she had to do. She felt some kind of way, and this and that. When nobody would be saying that she was petty, when nobody would be saying that she would be petty about him eating all the salad, right? Nobody would be saying that. Everybody would be saying that, well, that's how she felt. Well, that's how she felt. And what do men have to do? We have to accept that. So she just got a taste of her own medicine, oh, not her own medicine, but most of the medicine that men have to do. He chose to do it that way. So she has to accept. It. There's no, no need of sitting there talking about him and saying, oh, well, he this and he that. No, he did what he wanted to do. Just like she did what she wanted to do. Just gotta accept it and move on. Yeah. Okay. Um, you just had a word. <laughs> You're trying to go for touchdown. Did he, he, gave that he gave you a touchdown. He gave you a touchdown. So, um, Cupcake said women get rejected too. That salad BS was a form of rejection, and he used it as an out or an excuse. And and I I tend to agree with that. Um, and, but, an, and, and an insult. 
he insulted and an her and an insult you know like because that was kind of it was kind of rude like he kind of dre- tried to dress it up but he was still a little rude and it wasn't um, necessary you don't have to go about that that way no you, you don't and you could have just been truthful like hey you know one of the things that i look for on a first date is people not eating all their food and you ate all yours so uh i don't know if that's gonna work for me from at this point so or, no to all women, we have to take a doggy bag home to show that, you know, we're not, you know, and just greedy the women. Home. Mm-hmm. But you know what, Heather, well, you said a take doggy a doggy bag, bag home. Most men don't want you to take a doggy bag. They yeah, want I'm you a to doggy bag queen, queen so. Yeah, they got something that. to say about, they have something to say about that too. You damn if yeah. you do, you damn if you don't. I heard that recently. Well, That's true. Think, That's true. This is my point. Oh, yeah. Given all that expectations of other people, Roll how you roll, and that's how you roll. Unapologetic. That's you know. I say what I'm gonna say, and I said what I said. And how's that working for you? Because when you're unapologetic sometimes, and then you rude and insult people, you alone. You don't have to be rude in how you say things, being yourself. But if it comes across rude to somebody. That's how they feel. That's how they feel. Now I can work from that, but that that's my I hear you Don't know, make it right, I but I hear Say again. I, I said it doesn't make it right, but I hear you because that's how some people are. That's that's how they respond and react to things. You can't change that, right? I guess. Right, but then based on if we have a conversation and you know, you can be like. Well, you know, your tone of voice came off such and such, and it shocked me, and I'm not used to that. And if we're really vibing, I will correct my behavior. So that's what I'm talking about, how we... But that's the mature part. I, I appreciate that. And, and so, and, and based on that, you you know, I, I'm defining the way I am, but I'm not stuck there. Oh, okay. You know, with you, based on our conversation, I might be a little softer. Uh, with others, you know, I said what I said. That, you know, it just depends on the individual. I'm saying I am who I am, but I can modify my behavior. Well, I'm all right for the modification. You know, <laughs> I like it. Sometimes that sometimes those responses are either displaced. Mm. Um, and sometimes it's not warranted for certain people. You know what I'm saying? Like, if you know the intent of a person and you coming at them a certain way because you think that they're coming at you some way, then there's something wrong in communication and maybe it needs to stop for that moment so y'all yeah, can get you know, you're, you're breaking up, Miss Miss Heather. Um, Miss Heather, you, you're to back on auto tune. Like emotion of that conversation um, that we have to people sometimes is not warranted, and sometimes it's displaced. And it's important for us to either check that, or and or stop a conversation if we notice that both of us are either getting a little more emotionally involved and. And come back to it later. I mean, that's the more mature. Heather, you're breaking up a really bad. Um, I'm going to pass hard it to over do that to that at the moment. Gilded. I struggle with that as well. Heather, you were breaking up. We missed the last little portion of yours. I'm so sorry. Um, but Dr. Feelgood, please acknowledge her um, her comment in the chat, and I'm going to hand it over to you. Okay. Um, Ms. Heather, um, we so got to that question. Yes, you were on, you were on, um, you were on auto tune. Uh, we, <laughs> we got, um, the thing is, though, is that you you made a lot when we could hear you, and you know, 
people what Douglas was saying is that you go, you can only be you. And as 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 such, you know what you will tolerate and tolerate. However, I, I agree with you 100 percent Dude was looking for an excuse and he was trying to be nice, but he was what's called nice nasty. Served it in a dog bowl. Somebody told me about what the dog bowl. Dog bowl is doesn't matter if your point is valid or not. If it's in the dog bowl, nobody ain't gonna eat it. Nobody gonna eat out of dog bowl. So when we look at things like that, there are a lot of better ways of saying if he was really invested in her, if he's really feeling like he said he, he would have said, hey, he could have said all the thing about meal prep. Could have been like, okay, you know, I understand that you felt that, that but work on, let's try to do this. That was showed an investment in her. He was feeling her because whether you're a guy or ga- gal, you make you make rules for people to earn your earn. You break rules so people can have you. Ooh. So those those are the things you know because people like they could hit you upside the head with a baseball bat. Oh, he she's so upside the head with a baseball bat. You know, and if you're not if, if you're feeling them like that. I feeling that we give we give people we like for free what we make other people pay for, and I and I'm keeping that I'm keeping that gender agnostic because that's that's how people that's how people roll. Well, one of the things I wanted to talk about was some of the red flags, and I want you to put in the chat box. I'm gonna get, I'm gonna get with you, Anson. I'm gonna get with you. I didn't I didn't miss you, but okay. hey, can you uh, keep answer her question though? She said, yes, no, I, you feel good hurting someone who has shown you good qualities. But, but a lot of times, no, no, here's the answer. And, and I kind of, I, I guess I kind of molly, I kind of tiptoed around it. Okay. Men don't feel good about, people don't, men don't feel good about hurting women unless they're sociopaths, unless you're sociopaths. Sometimes men do things in their own way that a woman would be hurt but a man doesn't think that you're hurting them. Oh. So it's not, it, it's not, if someone someone purposely hurting you is if, if you give them a boundary and they purposely cross it, that's what I was gonna talk about. If you give somebody a boundary, if you say something and they, and they know and they acknowledge it and yet they still step past it, that's, that's purposeful. That is, that is borderline sociopath. But some guys, some guys say things or or do something, and you know it, it doesn't feel like that to them, but it hurts. It hurts the person. It it hurts the person. Did I answer your question, Heather? Yes. Okay. And you want to say nothing? <laughs> go ahead. Go ahead, and go ahead, Anson. No, I was going to address the question. Yes, Anson. Uh, yes, Dr. Anson. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Thought you had a tool in your mouth. <laughs> but, but um, no, I was going to address the question. I was going to say that no, that uh, as a man, I don't feel good by hurting someone's feelings. Because the purpose is not to hurt someone's feelings. But, um, I mean, I'm... I'm I live in the real world. If that, if it hurts, it hurts. Truth is truth. Uh, no matter what it Wait, is. Hey, what the real world? What? No, I'm saying the truth is the truth. So if what I'm saying is the truth, and you ain't like what I said, then I didn't mean to hurt your feelings. But it's not meant to be insulting. But <clears throat> a lot of times in 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 this world we live in, people say stuff that hurt feelings. You know, a lot of times women say things about men or say things to men that hurt men's feelings, but y'all never know because men don't say that. I mean, we, we had a show uh, in the past talk about men expressing themselves and their feelings, and a lot of times men don't do that. But as a well, woman, I believe I hurt people are... hurt people. Like, I get that part. But I think once we, as adults, start making general statements, like I heard recently, um, 
yeah, with, with you women, I, I don't know what to think. I don't know. Um, you damned if you do, you damn what you don't, if you don't. And I'm sitting here like, how did I end up in a whole pool of women when I'm dealing with you? <laughs> like, I don't understand how do you generalize women because yeah, some of us may do some of the same things, but you don't, you don't do that. You deal with it, with that person, with whatever the issue is. Like, well, well it's, the that, ener it's, it's, it's energies, energies it's, it's energies, Miss Heather. A lot of times, um, a lot of times people overgeneralize to absolve themselves from um, confronting the person who they really talking about directly. I, yes, yes, so, I understand that. You know, we for years, for years, we've we've heard of the we've heard of the NAS movement. Ninjas ain't ain't shy, and right. that doesn't you know, not the and, and the, the truth was not not. Not ninjas wasn't shite. It's just the ninjas that you were messing with wasn't shite. Right. <laughs> you exactly. can't mess with them. Exactly. And the same thing with the women. We we say, we say um biznatches ain't nothing, but it ain't it ain't all of them. It's the ones that we mess with. So we it, it's it's human things. So we absolve in, we try to lump everybody in so we're not making a direct attack, even though we need to make a direct attack. We need to name names. Yeah. It ain't, you know. Not all women ain't crap. It's surely, it's surely pleasant who lives on 234 Main Street in Cedar Rapids, <laughs> Iowa, who ain't crap. I'm not her. She ain't me. <laughs> so, but that, but you, see what, you see what I'm saying, right? Not my so, it, so instead of instead of instead of trying to blank trying to blanket everybody, we need to be specific on who ain't crap. Yeah. And all of us have to do it. And we have to hold people, we don't hold people accountable. Mm-hmm. We don't hold we don't hold people accountable for their for their negative behaviors, and then we and then we get upset at everybody else because we didn't hold that person accountable. We say uh, uh, the thing I hate now in, in our communities is mind your mind your own business. Yep, it ain't, ain't none of my business. How is that working out for us? It doesn't work not when you post everything on social media for everybody to see and for everybody to know say mind and everybody to, to develop a story about you. I mean, right. But what I'm saying though, it, it ain't working. <laughs> it ain't working. If something's wrong, you gotta say you gotta say it's wrong. You gotta call keep, it out. Yes, you know, accountability. There's, there's instances. There are instances where I don't know if y'all saw on World Star or the Shade Room, there was some black lady stealing out of out of Ulta, Ulta, Ulta out of Ulta, Ulta. Oh yeah, the, like, the beauty store. Yeah. Yeah, and they were just they were blatantly stealing. It wasn't like no sneak stuff and they were running out the door and the dude was recording them and then people were getting on the dude for recording them mm -hmm. instead instead of the women who were going in there taking stuff that wasn't theirs they couldn't afford so you know it, it, it's that it's, it's things like that it's things like that pookies and ray rays you know the street the street the streets discipline their own you get out of line in the streets, the streets will catch you. So there's a there's a mechanism for that. Mm. There's a there's a mechanism for that. It it's just not, it may not be, it may not be swift, but there's a mechanism that if you if you keep messing with the streets, the streets are gonna get you. And mm. and that that I, I really believe that. And from a person who lived in a lived in the largest housing complex, housing projects in, in North America. I can tell you, I can tell you about that. Most of the most of the guys that ran the streets in my in my youth are now pastors and stuff. <laughs> Regular squares. But anyway, um, one of the things I want to talk about in, in red flags is in this, and we talked about this, and this is kind of what goes back to what your question, Heather, if somebody doesn't respect your boundaries, somebody, somebody says, you know, you know, somebody's like, okay. Why are you ordering, you know, for example, everybody's heard of the, the stories of the woman who says, can you buy, buy doggy bags for my two kids? Ugh. You know, can you, or the guy that's like, you know, the guy, you know, you, you said you will have one drink, a Cosmo, and then he sent you over Long Island iced tea and expect you to drink it. You wasn't planning on drinking it. So you know, over doing things that, or try to push to see what they can get from you or get to get you to that makes you an uncomfortable place. 
that's a red flag because if they're doing this with this, if they're doing that to Rick, they ain't gonna stop. Has anybody had? Has anybody had? And put in a one in the in the chat box if you if you've had a person you've been on a date with that didn't respect your boundaries. Yes. And, I, and did, you know did you have a second one? Go ahead. Go Can ahead. Can I tell you a brief one real quick? <laughs> yeah. Sure. So, um, talking to this guy for a good while, and just a couple of weeks ago, we had a conversation over dinner where the person was discussing an ex relationship and how that a new relationship he was engaged in. They and his ex relationship and that person end up becoming friends or had mutual friends, and that he was really feeling that person, but he couldn't continue on with the relationship because it was too messy with his previous relationship. So at that dinner table, I asked him about going to a party coming up. And I had actually brought him to a party. I invited him the, the month before an old school hip hop party, had a great time, had a good time, had a good night. And so now the next month comes and he's like, yeah, somebody did invite me that, to invite me to a party like that, that freedom party. He said, somebody. So I said, okay. So as <laughs> I heard somebody, I said, I'm gonna tell you something. If you are going with another lady, please don't do that because that is going to not sit right with me. That morning of the party, I left work. I invited one of my friends spoke to this person, text them, have a great day. It was a great, you know, text conversation. Show up to the spot. This man is standing in the club with a lady standing next to him. And as I pass him by, he grabbed my arm, you know, to say hello. But I had already seen the lady, my peripheral, I play basketball. I said, oh my God. When he went to introduce me to this person, he named the same person that was in his situation in the past. And, and gave the name of the same person and, and tried to introduce me to them. And I'm sorry, I saw, I saw red. I was like, I don't know like, who that is. I, I, didn't, I, I told you that was gonna make me feel uncomfortable. If you bring in somebody, then just say that. Don't catch me off guard to a place that I introduced you to that was, is my happy place that I've been going to for over 10 years. If this person invited you, you should have no problem just saying like my friend such and such invited me. You know, I might see you there. Don't do that to me. Just knowing that my feelings is wrapped up in you. I'm, I'm here for you. I'm be like, it hurt the hell out of me. And sure. it was actually a Michael Jackson party, right? I love Michael Jackson. And I actually knew he loves Michael Jackson as well. I said, listen, I can't let this, I can't feel rejected. I felt rejected. I felt rejected and dejected. I pulled away from him because I was upset and kept on moving and hung out with my friend and had a good time. I danced the night away, but I, I kept taking a glimpse, you know, like, like, like the pillar of salt was behind me. And as I look back, the woman is throwing it on him dry. He's whispering in her ear. That's how many looks I was able to take when I turned around and I couldn't believe it. The person never called me to ask me how I was feeling, what I was, what happened? Why'd you pull away? Even if you wanted to know, did you get home safely? Nothing. I had to spend the weekend trying to get my emotions together because the amount of time that I felt like I spent with this person and they did that. And when I finally spoke to them, they didn't see anything wrong with it at all. Well, mm. that's, that, that's, that's he because- was, He wasn't doing the real deal with you. He had that side yeah. chick all the time. Well, that's- I don't, no, I don't that's, know. All I know, I was told that I made an assumption. I assumed when I asked this person, you name that person that you introduced me. He's, he said to me, that's not the same person. I know another person with the same name. Oh. I couldn't believe it. I guess you will. I, I guess you boo. It. I guess you boo the fool. I guess you boo the fool. So yeah, I got you. I, I got you. Believe it. I said, wow. So if so, you guys heard the story, right? And I said to him, I said, if anybody else heard the story in the context of the previous conversation the previous week, they'd be like, come on, man. Like, you couldn't come up with something better than that. And if it is true that there's two people in his life with the same name from his past or a friend, then fine, let it be. But don't, don't have me out here looking crazy. And while I have to say that this is not a 100% defined relationship, we have been connected for a minute unless I was just booboo the fool. And if I was booboo the fool, then I can accept it. But don't do me like that, because I, I don't do people like that at all. 
But I that's why I feel so emotional yeah. today. This really hurt me. It really, really hurt me and put a stamp on me. But it, I'm still hopeful. Not for that person, I, but I'm hopeful for I whatever. Understand. And and that's a that's a good attitude to have. But I'm just gonna say this and take it how you take it, but just take that L and move on because yes. he's not if, if, if he if 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 he's gonna be flaky as flaky as that, make a pie, eat the pie and move on because that's that's pretty much what's all there. Um, any anybody else have any any experience with that? Somebody not just not respecting your boundaries? Raise your hands. Raise your hands. Raise your feet. Raise your hands and feet. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, have, I have some, but I I can't talk. All right, go ahead. Go ahead, answer. Well, I was gonna say I don't. I don't. Um, that has never happened to me. Uh, I think that hasn't happened to me because I don't really put boundaries, as many boundaries up with people, especially when I'm first meeting them. Because, you know, I can see, I, I'm, my goal is to get to know them and to learn them. So if I put boundaries up off rip, I'm pretty much already saying that I'm not trying to get to know the person. I'm already trying to put my arms out in this person like yeah you can't get too close to me. so I typically don't put up boundaries off rip as I get to know someone that's when the boundaries start to work okay I know this person don't like seafood so I know that when we go to this restaurant I won't go to a seafood restaurant okay so okay that, that's pretty much how I kind of go about it and I okay. think that, to, I think that boundaries the whole topic of boundaries are more prevalent with women than men for safety. Oh no, I, I mean, but with with the thing is that men men will take more chances than women because that's just how we're built and how we how we're made. Um, but understanding that a lot of us a lot of us have assumptions and we overstep our bounds even when they say something because we're thinking one way and they're they're we're not hearing what they're saying. Go ahead, Douglas. Uh, well, uh, a couple things that, that came up. I was like, well, how long before you take a person you're dating to your happy spot? <laughs> you, you know, to a club or a particular restaurant where you, you know, be like on cheers. Everybody go in and know your name. But that's just one question. But like Anderson <laughs> said. Um, My situation, it was about a year and a half that I was able to get him out to this spot because he thought it was something else. And I was like, no, it's really chill. And ha he had a really good time. But the next time, I guess he got another invite and wanted to bring him there, knowing that most likely I would be there, which made no sense. But yeah. Right. And, and another thing I would say, um, when you first get them, well, after a year, year and a half, that's a, that's a long time. But mm -hmm. in general, you, you know, you have to kind of like be open and let's see how this works out. Because um, if you cuss too much, I'm not going to like you. You <laughs> like cuss a lot. You say cuss too much? Yes. Cuss too much, Douglas. I, 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 um, I just get enough when it's enough. Or if every uh, other uh, word is something. Right. And, that, and that's a guy, that's mostly a guy thing. A guy doesn't want really, doesn't really desire a woman who not, not, not use profanity. But profanity I is like y'all, y'all New Yorkers know what I'm talking about. You know, yo, yo, that effing this and that, that the dead ass. You know, you know what I mean. And and, and it goes and, and, and then if, it, if it's private, if we're out chilling, you know, on the beach or somewhere, and it's quiet conversation between us two, I can accept a little more. But out in the public setting, like out to dinner or a theater or something and it's just a it's not a set definition if i say hey 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 come on watch your language oh oh you come yeah it's a uh, it's a seesaw you know so fine yeah it, if, if it's if, if it's making a point is one thing if it's if, if that's just how you talk that's not a good thing either yeah, man yeah. man or man or man or woman yeah then I that shows you have a little vocabulary I can accept it, 
or not accept it. You know, if I don't accept it, you know, the first day you cleaned, you ate all the salad, so I can't deal with it. You know, I'm going to keep that up. <laughs> yeah, Don, I, that's cool. That's cool. One of the things, one of the things that, that could be a red flag, I don't know, is people giving you, it's called negging or giving back compliments. Like, you look good for your age. I Or I usually don't date dark-skinned chicks, but just, I, I think I could date you. Or, dang, you kind of skinny, ain't you? It's not wrong with being too skinny, but hey, you know I had to say something. Now, but, but here's, person, the, here's the thing on that. What if you really don't know? Um, and some stuff, people are like, oh, why'd you do that? I'm like, do what? I've always done it like that, or, or whatever. And we that's just when, don't make the connection. Right. But what I'm saying though is that. Cause I, well, uh, no, I got a friend that uh, she's a tad bit darker than me, and you know she fought that fight her entire life, um, and she still has a, a issue with it. Cause a lot of men say, you know, you fine for a dark skinned woman, and and which is wrong. And we we, we condition for on European standards, you know, the lighter the skin, the longer the hair, and all that. So that's kind of ingrained into us, and you know that black wasn't the top shelf. So when you see a fine black woman, it is like for me, it's like complimenting her. Like yes, yeah. and, and and that's the thing. It, no, and I I understand that, but it's not what you say; it's what they hear. Mm -mm, that's how you it's say what, it. Is is what they what they hear, because Douglas, you you know, a lot of people do. Oh wow. They're like, wow, and and then, but the person might be looking at it differently. Like, what they've never seen? They've never seen a person <laughs> like me before. Said, am I not good enough? I got something yeah. to add to that. I got something to add to that. Go ahead. It's not answer. what you say. It's not what you say. It's who you are when you say it, and who you say it to. Because I, I, I say every person that's on here tonight, there's a lot of things that you will not want to hear certain people. But I guarantee you, if that one person say that to you, you're gonna be like, "Ooh, I like that." <laughs> cool. But that, but that goes back. <laughs> yeah, but that goes back to that goes back to we make rules for others, and we break we we allow we break rules for the ones that we really we really want. Under that's that's perfect illustration. But a lot of times, that's you know, that's deep. You know, a lot of times. You know, we're thinking we're doing the right thing, and we're not, we're not meaning malice, but we got to understand. We got to we got to in getting to know people. You got to know what what kind of sets them off and what triggers and not and trying to not trigger them. But if a person if a person got a you know the problem is that we don't we don't lower our guards for at least three months. Three well, months. No, we, no, no. So, uh, no, no, because perfect example is, you know, you, we've all, all heard of bad pickup lines. Oh, are those pants made of made of Windex? Uh, you got Windex on your pants? So I can see myself in them. Like, that's pretty lame for most people. But if the right man said it to the right woman, or, or if one woman like the like a certain man and he said it to her, she might like that. But we all yeah. think that's kind of lame. <laughs> hey, is your pants made of Windex? No, it, no. It, uh, it, it, your pants made of uh, mirrors or something like that. It's, a, it's a, some kind of stupid pickup up He said, is your, are your pants made of mirrors because I can see myself in them? Right. Something oh, like okay. I thought I heard I, I know all the... No, I know I know all the corny ones. I know all the corny ones. <laughs> I, used, I used... Trust me, I was... I was Captain Lane back in college sometimes, <laughs> but one of one of the things that one of the things I did though, like when I go to a club and I walk up to a lady, and I'll be like, "Hey, baby, can I can I be your baby daddy?" And they look oh, at me like, God. "What?" But the idea was, the idea was, I'm not trying to, I wasn't trying to get with them. I just wanted to dance, and it threw a lot of time. It worked most of the time. I said, "Oh, yeah, we dance." Because I wasn't trying, they, they saw I wasn't trying to kick it to them. Because okay, you know, you were lame back in college. I was kind of lame, yeah. Even though I was I'm a noob, still, I was, I'm still lame. 
Hey, yeah. <laughs> I do. Hey, that's me. So I'm gonna have some corny lines for you. <laughs> <laughs> but a lot, a lot of times, um, backhanded compliments, as they're called, can be an issue. And what happens is we, um, a lot of times, people use them to t- try to control people. I would the salad guy. The, the salad guy that was he was like you buy but you eat too much <laughs> that was i mean he might not well like i said he was making an excuse but the thing was was that he might not have he he might not have he tried to he tried to dress it up but it wasn't you know it wasn't that because a lot of times you say well women be like oh he can eat the box like anybody's business what she what what is she not saying? My back. That's all ain't getting, he can do. Yeah, yeah my all. back. Yeah, my back. My back. Got, my back ain't broke. At all. <laughs> that's a backhand. That's a backhanded compliment. Um, you know, a guy's like, well, she does. She gives me a good. She she gives me good. This, the compliment, the backhand could be like, but I ain't taking her outside. Oh, <laughs> I'm going nowhere in the daytime. So like, I what, see is, a, what is a compliment? Well, and who's uh, comp- no, 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 no. But, but the thing is, though, and, and a compliment is sincere and is doesn't, is, 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 well, it, it, the person who's receiving it. But the thing is, though, it's supposed to be, it, it, it should be sincere and meant to boost. The person, you know, say, hey, I acknowledge that I like something about you, so I'm going to say something about it. You got a fat ass ain't a compliment. <laughs> unless that's what, unless all you well, want, guys. To someone, did, to someone yeah. it might be. No, no, I, 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 I get it. I get it. But if you're just saying that to everybody, say, oh, you got a nice fatty. You know, in context, it, it's not a compliment, but to some women, it may be because... Magic City, you can say that to about everything you see. <laughs> yes, you can. <laughs> yes, you can. But a compliment would be, would be okay, I'm going I'm to look at Lakesha because I can see her on the screen. I like your glasses. They really, they really set off your face. That is a compliment. Thank, I can thank, say, you, that, thank you for that flattering remark. But I mean, but that's, but it's, it's sincere and it, and it, that's, you know, I can look at Anton, Anton, I'm, I, I'm jealous of your beard, man. You're a beard, you, you are a beard God. That's it a compliment. It it's a compliment. Time. I could say, you know, I could say somebody, I'm not gonna say anybody on here, but I could say, hey, Roger, that struggle beard, you, you work at it. <laughs> <laughs> you, you work at it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, but but you you well, get the just... is working. <laughs> I, I mean I, I just I, I I understand what you're saying, but it's um. But this, this is my favorite joke. Um, back in college, we had the tree pearl, and his old head told her like, "Damn girl, you darker than a minute after midnight." <laughs> Coming from um, the old head, she loved that because this was uh, in '89, where you had your cars and you put your like uh, special um, name on the side, the bottom panel of the car. Yep. And so, like a week or two later, she came back like twelve one midnight. <laughs> you, you know, so depending on who it comes from, you know, she took it as a compliment and ran with. It. Where'd you go to school, uh, Douglas? Uh, Albany State, down in Albany, Albany Georgia. Albany State. State. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Y'all had some <laughs> interesting folks down there. That's all I'll say. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the detrimental. Our, our chapter down there was the detrimental Delta Z. But yeah, <laughs> um, but yeah, but but no, you're you're right though. And and like I said, it's 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 all in context. But realistically, we know we know a compliment when we hear one. A true compliment, and we know. No, 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 because current current state of affairs, you can give a sincere compliment 
to some women and they think you're coming on to them or, you know, sexual harassment or, or something. Um, that's, that's only if you're ugly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like Anson said, if you're ugly, oh, what? don't be talking to me. <laughs> you, 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 250, the muscles and stuff, it's like, <laughs> that you get the key key from them. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We, 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 I think, I think we've all somewhat experienced that. But uh, hey, we're getting close to the end of the time, end of my time. Um, I want to thank everybody who's come on. Um, I want to thank everybody who's 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 been day ones. I want to thank everybody who's here. Um, one couple of couple of announcements I need to make. 29th of October, I masquerade. Get ticket. Buy ticket. Buy, buy, buy. Come on down, the Scottish the, the Scottish Mason Wright uh, building. It's a nice building in, in lovely Savannah. Um, Dr. Fabulous has a, a, a suite of rooms booked or, or ready to be booked at a very good price because the average price right now for that time of the year is about two eighty nine, and she got it. She got it under two hundred dollars. So we'll we'll get that information out to you. Um, We'll get that information out for you soon. This will be up tomorrow. So if you if you know anybody who wants to listen to the, tonight's show, we'll um we we'll, it'll be on tomorrow night. It'll be on tomorrow morning. I'll make sure it's out there. Um, and I want everybody to continue to pray for my sister, Chocolate Pearl, and as she continues her recovery. Her her surgery was successful. She is rest. She is resting well. She's a trooper. She's like me, but she's less high than I was last week. <laughs> um, but you say mother and child is doing fine. Yeah, she's doing fine. She she's recovering. <laughs> she's she's recovering. That's my yeah, favorite. You know, that, that you, you know that, that's what they say when 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 women have a baby. They say, well, yeah, the mother. Fine. Too quiet, Doug. I ain't got no babies. Ain't no babies coming this out of here. <laughs> the factory the factory is closed from what I understand but um 23 years I, ago so. and like and like I said like I said I, I want everybody I hope everybody's got something out of this I think this was a great show I think I thank you for the participation I know some of y'all just listened um and I want y'all to understand that we we love y'all we appreciate y'all we want you, please subscribe to the channel upscale to love the number for you on on youtube tell your friends about it i think i think this is going to be a great thing we're working towards different things we're working towards a better a better operation we're improving every week and i'm going to turn it back over to the lovely the fantabulous what you got douglas before we before i turn it over to dr fab do's and don'ts on the first day well i'm gonna ask you what you bring to the table that's a do for me and probably a don't for y'all. Hey. What you bring to the table, a spoon, a knife, and a fork. Now, anywho, I got you. Good evening, everyone. Thank you so much for coming back. Um, as Dr. Feelgood said, we are preparing for our masquerade ball. It's going to be absolutely spectacular. And we, or I have set aside rooms at the Embassy Suites in Pula, which is 6.7 miles from the event site. So you don't have to worry about driving too far to the hotel, but it is an excellent rate. If you are interested in getting a VIP table, by all means, go on Upscale Love for You group so that you can get the necessary information. And if you're getting your pre-sale tickets, please get them before August 26th. After August 26th, the rates will go up for the tickets. So with that being said, I've enjoyed each and every one of you. And Danny, I hate so bad you're in a location where you can't say nothing because I miss from hearing your voice and all your little added extras. And to Douglas, we appreciate you every time you come on, because it's going to take you with the world spin. If, if anyone else have anything to say, please say it. If not, Dr. Feel yes, Good yes. is back. Oh, go ahead, Douglas. My apologies. I was like, which lady wanted to go? Uh, I can't fly you out, but I can send you a bus ticket. 
<laughs> you know what, Douglas? Douglas, you can just give me gas money. I'll put my cash app in the um, chat. <laughs> go where? Where y'all trying to go? You're going to give me gas money. I ain't saying where we're going. We can't tell you all of that. Ooh. All right. Well, it's been a blast. <laughs> I'm turning it back over to Dr. Feelgood so he can do what he do. Hey, Dr. Zaduck, you got anything before I close this up? No, sir. All right, now. Hey, like I said, I want to thank each and every one of you for coming on. Hey, be good. Be great. Oh, and speedy recovery to our chocolate pearl, our special girl. God bless. Right. Y'all have y'all have a great y'all have a great night and a great weekend, and we'll see you next Thursday. Upscale for love for you, tantalizing talk. This is Feel Good Out. Good night. Mwah.